There are a few tricks when you're filming that will make the process go by much faster and will actually help editing as well. There are only three different parts that I film when I'm filming with my anchors and those parts are when they're together and that's one session, uh, the one anchor and all their parts, that's the second session, and the other anchor and all their parts, that's the third session. When filming your anchors, you should film their whole part without stopping the video. This means you have to keep track of what each anchor is saying. If you don't, you may forget something or you may have a hard time editing it later. You probably want to film from about waist level and up just a little bit above their head. If an anchor is being filmed by themselves, then you should probably have a little space next to them that's available to put any text or video or images. Once you film the first anchor and all of their lines completely, then you can stop the recording and then switch out for the other anchor and then do the exact same thing, but this time leaving this blank space on the other side. It's important that when a student messes up that you just keep recording, but tell them to go back and repeat the line. You can fix that in editing later. Anytime both anchors are on the screen together, you need to make sure that you film all those parts in one sitting as well without stopping the video. It's important to film this way, especially using the iPad, because now you'll only have three clips to edit from and to find footage from those three clips instead of trying to search through dozens of them. This is gonna make your editor's life a whole lot easier. iMovie makes it possible for you to search within a clip and then just drag a little bit of that clip down to your timeline. Audio is one of the hardest things to control, but it's important to make sure that when you're filming something that you actually get right up close to them instead of zooming in. This is an example of what your audio will sound like if you get close enough to your anchor. This is an example of what your audio will sound like when the iPad is further away, but you're zoomed in. It's not as crisp and clear, and the picture is actually a little fuzzy as well. Make sure audio is consistent and that the anchors speak loud enough that you don't ever have to turn up the volume in post-production. It's important that when you finish your project that you listen to the audio from the beginning to the end to make sure there's no loud or soft spots. I like adding a little background music to all my newscasts because it helps cover up some of those rough spots in your audio. If you are adding background music, make sure it's not too loud because you don't want to cover up what your anchors are saying. iMovie comes with a few free options of music, but you can also add music from your iTunes library. You can also find a plethora of music choices at the YouTube audio library. Music is also important to help you transition from one scene or segment to another one. If you're just showing this to people at your school, you don't really have to worry about copyright issues when it comes to, to music. But if you're showing this to people on YouTube in the community, then I would make sure that what you have uh, doesn't infringe on any copyright laws.